Today's scripture reading, Exodus chapter 33, verse 12 to 33, portrays an intimate and complex relationship between God and Moses. They are depicted as concerning like friends. Engaging in both enjoyable moments of conversation and disputable moments of disagreement. They share their thoughts, dreams, and even engage in debates about the meaning of life, much like friends do. Moses expresses his frustration and confusion to God. He feels overwhelmed by the responsibility of his role, leading the Israelites, but lacking clear guidance on how to do it, who will assist him, or what their specific path forward is. Moses describes his sense of limitedness with no roadmap or itinerary. Itinerary. Only a vague call from God and the sense that God favors him for some reason. Moses even suggests that this is God's mess to fix, not his. God responds with reassurance, telling Moses, I am here, take it easy. However, Moses persists, expressing the need for more than just God's presence. He wants clarity and guidance. God, because of his affection for Moses, agrees to provide what he needs. So Moses, somewhat stunned by this response, whispers, show me your glory. This request by Moses to show me your glory in Exodus chapter 33 verse 18 is indeed a profound and deeply spiritual one. While it may not explicitly mention Jesus, we can connect Moses' desire for a tangible experience of God's presence with the Christian belief in the incarnation of Jesus Christ. That's because in Christian theology, Jesus is often seen as the embodiment of God's glory and the ultimate revelation of God revelation of God to humanity. He is believed to be the Word made flesh. John chapter 1 verse 14. Through whom God's matter and will were revealed to humanity. So we can interpret when Moses was asking for something similar to the presence of Jesus, it reflects a Christian perspective on the Old Testament text here. Moses is longing for a tangible and transformative encounter with God, much like we Christians believe Jesus provides such an encounter. It's a desire for God's presence to be made manifest in a way 
that would guide and sustain him in his leadership and help him understand how to live according to God's will. In a broader sense, giving glory to God or acknowledging God's glory in the Christian tradition often involves living in accordance with God's teachings, demonstrating faith, love, and obedience to God. For us, for Christians, Jesus' life and teachings serve as a model for how to do this. So, the continuity of spiritual themes across the Old and New Testaments emphasizes the longing for a deep and transformative relationship with God. In today's Gospel lesson, Matthew chapter 22, verse 15 through 22, Jesus is confronted by the Pharisees and Herodians with a question about paying taxes to Caesar. The Pharisees and Herodians attempt to trap Jesus with a question about paying taxes to Caesar. However, Jesus often used such situations to convey profound spiritual truth and redirect the conversation towards matters of eternal significance. Jesus says, give to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God. This response highlights the idea of recognizing the dual roles and responsibilities that individuals have in both the secular and spiritual realms. Today's Gospel lesson is not primarily about taxes, but rather about the deeper spiritual message and transformation, which is insightful and aligns with the common understanding of Jesus' teaching style. The way Matthew presents the encounter between the faces and Jesus is very, very interesting. Sending their disciples or less experienced, less experienced individuals to confront Jesus could have been a tactic used by the Pharisees to test Jesus or to distance themselves from potential failure. The encounter with Jesus often posed a challenge to those who sought to trap him or discredit his teachings. Jesus had a remarkable ability to respond to questions and challenges with profound wisdom and spiritual insight, often leaving his opponent perplexed. In this case of the Pharisees, attempting to interact Jesus with the question about taxes, Jesus redirected the conversation towards spiritual matters and the concept of giving to God what belongs to God. Jesus begins by recognizing their attempt to track him and then proceeds to address their question. When he asks for a coin and then highlights the image you need, 
he effectively distanced himself from the use of the coin that bears the image of Caesar. This action underscores a clear distinction between the worldly economic system and the spiritual one. While individuals may engage with the economic and social structures of their time, Jesus emphasizes the higher allegiance to God and the responsibility to live in accordance with God's principles. The concept of giving to God what belongs to God invites a deeper reflection on what truly belongs to God. As we believe, everything, including people, belongs to God. This viewpoint emphasizes the sacredness of all life and underscores the interconnectedness of humanity. It challenges us to recognize each other as sacred beings deserving of love and respect. However, it's true that in the real world, people often fail to see one another in this light. Recent events such as the conflict between Israel and Hamas are tragic examples of how hatred and violence can overshadow the principles of love and respect, leading to devastating consequences. By recognizing the inherent value of every individual and treating them as belonging to God, we move closer to living out the principles of love, compassion, and justice that Jesus consistently preached. It's a reminder that the kingdom of God is not just a future hope, but a present reality that can be lived out in our interactions with one another. Thanks be to God. Amen.